Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For my video today, I have kind of an old-fashioned chat about bags for you. So my favorite brand of bags has to be Louis Vuitton. It is and always has been. And so I was looking at my bags thinking that I should probably rate them from best to worst. And worst here is a relative term because if it's on my shelf and in my closet, then I love it. I'm pretty ruthless when it comes to my bag collection. I try to keep it under like 25 or 30 bags. And so if a bag is not working for me, even if it is beautiful, I still will sell it on because I just don't like having like a ton of bags in my uh, closet to look at but not to use. So all of these bags here, I do love them. However, obviously some are going to be better than others. So I'm going to walk you through my uh, nine bags and I'll do the order from worst to best. Um, I'm going to be looking primarily at the function but also at the beauty of the bag. So I'm gonna start with the worst, which happens to be the oldest bag that I have uh, from Louis Vuitton, and this is my Sac de Paul. So this bag is quite old. It is from the 90s. I did buy this one pre-owned. It's the only uh, Louis Vuitton bag that I do have that was pre-owned, and I love it for so many reasons. First of all, I just love Epi Noir leather. I think it is beautiful, and it wears like iron. Um, I really like the shape of this bucket bag. I thought it was very unique when I first saw it, and it always gets compliments because it's very much eye-catching. Um, you know, the octagonal base at the bottom and all the beautiful little detail, even uh, the little subtle LV on the belt right here. So my problems with this bag are basically that it is essentially a black hole, really. So if you open it up, you can see that there, the interior of the bag is black as well. It's very, very difficult to find things inside this bag because of that, and because of the shape of the bag, it's really hard to get any sort of bag organizer that's actually going to fit in it and work with it. One other thing that stops this one from being ranked higher is that the strap is really pretty short, so you cannot wear this one crossbody. But it is nice and roomy um, overall, and I do still love the look of it. However, I feel like right now with the current trends, this does look a little bit dated. It is quite a bit bigger than most of your bags today. So for that reason, this one is going to be last on my list. Moving on to number eight is my Tivoli PM. Uh, I bought this bag brand new when I was downsizing from a really large bag that I was carrying and I still to this day think this bag is absolutely beautiful. I love all the pleating, I love all the curves on the bag, the zipper is even curved and for whatever reason the vachetta or vachetta, however you want to pronounce it, on this bag is absolutely beautiful. It has aged so pretty. Um, there is loads of leather on it as well, and the um, interior of the bag is pretty roomy, all things considered. Um, you can fit a ton of stuff in there, so it does function quite well to hold your belongings. My uh, problem with this bag is it's pretty obvious that it does not have a shoulder strap. It is meant to be a top handle bag, and I know that I could get a strap and attach it on either side with the D-rings on these handles, but I have tried that and it has been kind of uh, not very successful. It does tend to flop around in a sort of unbalanced way, and I don't really like the way that looks, so consequently, this bag is really limited to top handle carry, and for that reason, I don't use it as much because I've gotten so used to having top handle bags that also have a shoulder strap that uh, this one is kind of uh, not one I reach for very often but it still is a beautiful bag it just lands on at number eight on my list okay moving along to number seven another leather bag here this is my Citadine and it is in gorgeous gorgeous taupe color fell in love with this color this color goes with absolutely everything it is the perfect neutral and this bag is so beautiful it is of the emprunt leather of course which I love I just love Louis Vuitton's leathers in general I think they're really striking and really really durable and beautiful this one is nice and soft and pliable whereas Epi obviously stays quite stiff but it does have the beautiful detail of the banding around the bottom 
It's got feet on the bottom. It has a uh, long shoulder strap, a double strap. And of course the hardware is pretty too. It's got this turn lock clasp here. And if you wanted to, you could put a bag charm hanging down there or your keychain, whatever you desire. Another thing that is really great about this bag is that it came with this detachable pouch, which I absolutely love for um, holding cards or just if you're going out for cocktails or something like that and you want a very minimal bag, you can actually unclasp it from the tote and you can uh, use it as a little tiny clutch. So I love that aspect of it. Also the lining on this bag is really, really nice. It's got the stripes on it and then of course you have lots of pockets inside as well. So the thing that stops this from being higher up on my list is number one is a very heavy bag, <laughs> very heavy because of the leather itself. And because of that weight, if you load the bag up, it does tend to pull right here. Now there's not a, any sort of ripping or any distress on it, but it does have that um, shape that has kind of relaxed because of the weight of the bag and the handles pulling up on it. And um, probably my biggest problem with this bag is that the glazing has completely cracked off. So uh, I was a little bit disappointed in this because you can see that it is very, very obvious. Let me see if I can get my hand in there so you can see the discoloration on the straps. All of the glazing has come off on um, each side of the strap. So it's, it happens to be on both sides of the top of the strap, which is of course where it's going to rub and wear and tear the most. And so for that reason, I was a little bit disappointed in the wear and tear of this bag. I have not yet looked into getting it repaired. I'm sure that there could be some sort of repair um, available from Louis Vuitton, but I haven't looked yet. Um, I used this bag a ton when I first got it, like consistently every day. And I feel like it's certainly gotten its uh, use and I've gotten my money's worth out of it. So for right now, it's sitting in my closet. It's still a great bag, but I don't reach for it as much as I used to. Okay, next up is number seven, and this may surprise some people. This is actually my MM size graceful in the Damier Azure. I have only one bag in Damier Azure. It's not because I don't like it, it's just because I found that there's a little bit uh, less of a selection of the types of bags that you can get from Louis Vuitton that do come in this colorway. So a couple of things that I love about this bag is that it's very roomy. It has a really comfortable strap. The strap is nice and wide so it rests very comfortably on your shoulder. It has some beautiful features like these big, big rings here um, that really stand out as well as the luggage tag which I really like and I did have it monogrammed. Um, it is very large, this bag, very, very large. So you can get a ton of stuff in it. Now I have gone ahead and purchased a bag organizer for it, not one specifically made for it, just a big bag organizer that I'm able to fit inside. And it does actually organize my belongings a little bit better and makes things a little bit easier to uh, reach in and out for because of the way that the bag is just so big and so open. Um, it does have a pink lining inside. Uh, that's one of my little niggly points. Now, as beautiful as it is, it's really hard to keep clean because your hands are constantly at it. And I can see already there's some discoloration just from my hands uh, touching it and uh, my arm going in and out of the bag. Another thing uh, that kind of makes this sort of middle of the pack for me is that the bag itself, now I know it is a hobo, it's supposed to be slouchy, but when you put it on your shoulder and then you're trying to reach inside the bag, a lot of times the weight of your belongings in the bag make it pull down and it's just a little bit harder to get in and to reach around and rummage around to get your belongings. So that is something to be aware of. Now I do tend to carry this bag in the summertime. However, this summer I didn't really carry it much because I got a Chloe basket bag and I was uh, so in love with that one that I was just using that one all the time. But this is a very nice bag. Now obviously it does come in the PM size. So if you want something slouchy with this look to it, but not as big, that would definitely be a better option for you. I like a roomy bag myself, but like I said, it is a bit um, cumbersome to get into. 
I would definitely recommend if you're going to pick up this bag to get the a bag organizer of some kind just so that you can manage your belongings and find them much more easily. But it is a really nice bag, just kind of a middle of the pack for me. Okay, number five, a solidly in the middle of the pack, might be a little bit surprising to some people, is my beautiful Speedy 25 in the Epi Noir. So I bought this brand new way back at the very end of 2001, and it is beautiful. So this was my very first Louis Vuitton bag. I love it still to this day. I still think it's gorgeous. I still think it's a timeless classic and you cannot beat the wear and tear on this bag. I mean, like I said, uh, 2001, so it is going on 22 years old and it is still as beautiful to me as the day I bought it. There's really very, very little in the way of any kind of wear and tear on the corners or anything and the hardware is still in really good shape. It may not be as shiny as a brand new bag, but it doesn't have all of those funny spots on it that some of the hardware has been getting and of course it is nice and roomy inside and you can fit a ton of stuff. So for me, this is a very classic bag. It goes with everything. It can be for a dressier occasion or it could work casually. Two things about this bag that uh, keep it from being at the top, top of my list are again, the black hole syndrome. Uh, so it's very difficult to see inside the bag. Consequently, I did buy a pink bag organizer that I put inside and it's so much easier to find everything. And the other thing is quite obviously no shoulder strap. So just like my Tivoli, you can of course put a shoulder strap on the D-rings on the handles, but again, I'm not a big fan of that. I just feel like it's very clumsy and unbalanced. And um, overall, I do have to say that if it's going to be the type of situation where I want a bag to function both uh, on, as a shoulder bag, and as a top handle bag, this one is not going to make the cut, but it is really a beautiful, timeless, classic bag. And I still, to this day, cannot believe how beautifully the Epi leather has worn on this one. Really, really one of my all-time favorites. Love this bag. Next up, number four, is my beautiful little Clapton backpack. This one is in the Damier et Ben with the beautiful leather trim on it. So, so many, so many good things about this bag. I'm gonna take this off because this is not a Louis Vuitton bag charm. It is just a coach one. It just goes perfectly. Um, so, a couple things that I love about this bag. First of all, it gets two straps, obviously, because it is a backpack. So you can take your straps and make the uh, bag into a backpack, which is really what it's kind of meant to be. So you would have the straps hanging like so on the back. Um, the other one is up on the shelf. I'm not going to bother grabbing it right now. But you can also, as I have done, take one of the straps and use it as just a shoulder strap. And that is my preferred way of wearing this bag. I just find it to be a little bit more functional. So you have the long strap. You can adjust it quite a lot. So you can actually use this bag as a cross body if, body if you wanted to. And it does have the cute little handle on top, which makes it very, very versatile. Also easy to manage if you're getting in and out of the car, because if you have a really long strap on a bag and then you have this little handle, it just makes it that much easier to grab. It has a beautiful little clasp on the front. And then when you open it up, it really does open up inside. It just has some uh, you know, air paper in there. It opens up nicely. The sides actually have magnets to snap it closed in a nice way so that you can keep the, the bag in better shape. And overall, it's just very, very functional uh, because of the strap options on this one. The only reason that it is not in my top three is because it is a little bit on the small side for me. I do tend to carry a lot of things with me. And so this is one of those bags that I would have to use um, when I am downsizing. But other than that, really beautiful bag. I'm really kind of disappointed that they discontinued this one because I think this one is absolutely gorgeous and in my opinion, a little bit better looking than some of their other backpacks that they have um, in their collection. Okay guys, now we are in the top three. So number three is going to be my Neo No Way in the uh, Damier. Oh no, I'm sorry, not Damier. This one is in the monogram with the black leather. So you probably know if you know this bag that it came in a ton of different leather colors. I went with the black after much deliberation and I'm very, very glad I did because I love the look of the brown and the black. This way you can wear it with um, earth tones and you can wear it with your blacks as well. 
and also I never have to worry about any sort of soiling or color transfer on the bag because of the black leather. It has worn very nicely. All of the hardware is still beautifully shiny and it is a nice roomy bag with a lot of uh, ways to accessorize it. So a couple of the things I have done is put this short little handle on it to make it easier to grab. I got my little pom-pom hanging around there just because I like it on this bag. And then I also, of course, have gotten a bag organizer for it. I chose a blue one because once again, the black hole is very difficult to find things in. So I got blue so I can see everything when I look inside the bag. So overall, a really, really great bag. I love the fact that the top is open so I never have to fuss with clasp or anything like that. Uh, so it is really working very, very well for me. What keeps it from the top two is that it is a little bit more on the casual side, so you definitely can't wear this to a dressier occasion. Um, you could lengthen the strap and wear it as a crossbody, but it is a little bit bulky. And the only other thing that sometimes irritates me is that this little clasp in the front here, these um, drawstrings, can sometimes get in the way if you're reaching inside the bag. So you can see that they thread their way through the interior of the bag to close it better. And occasionally they do get in the way as you're trying to put things um, in and out of the bag. So that's a minor little thing for me. It certainly doesn't um, make it a, um, you know, something that's going to stop me from using the bag, but I do love my Neo No Way. And if you have been on the fence about this one, I can highly recommend it. It's very, very functional, easy for the most part to get in and out of. And if you get it in a dark leather like this, you're never going to have to worry about wear and tear. It's just really a fantastic bag. Okay, now we are down to the top two, and uh, you probably won't be surprised by this one. It is my Neverfull. So I don't use this bag as a handbag. I've never liked it as a handbag. I initially got it for that, and I kind of hated it because it was so open and just, I don't know, I just didn't like the way it looked as a handbag. However, I started using it as a tote bag, and that was perfect for me. So I use this bag every single day to go to work as my tote bag. It's a little bit a little bit dusty inside because I did have to clean it out for this video, but usually it's full of pens, pencils, papers, binders. Uh, sometimes I put my lunch in here. I put, um, you know, ID badges and gosh, what else do I have in here? All kinds of stuff. Sometimes I put my shoes in there too. Uh, so the bag is super, super functional. It never is full, um, just like the title says or the name says. And you can see that mine is definitely the uh, original one because of the interior on here. I'll just put the flap up there so you can see that the Louis Vuitton is in script instead of the black lettering. And it also has the lining with the flower stripe design on it, which was the original version of the bag. Um, now, I did not get a uh, pouch with this one. They didn't have a pouch with them when they first came out. Now, of course, they have slightly different lining with slightly different lettering, and they also come with a pouch. What I did like about this is the drawstrings, although to be honest with you, I don't really use them that much because most of the time this bag is open uh, for all of my papers and books and things like that as I'm heading off to work. Uh, but it does look like that if you wanted to make it into a handbag. I thought that was how I was going to carry it when I first got it. Didn't work out for me. However, as far as a tote bag, as I said, it worked out. It's fantastic. So I've been carrying this pretty much every day for over 10 years, I think. Uh, and it has really, really stood the test of time. So there's very little wear and tear on the bottom corners. The only place that you can really see the wear is on the handles right here because obviously they flop and bend. And so there's a lot of creasing on that, but the glazing itself has not actually come off, which I'm very happy about. So unlike my Citadine, which I have a big glazing issue on it, uh, this is not bad at all. And like I said, for all of the use and wear and tear that this gets, uh, this is probably my least baby bag because as a tote bag, it just has to be a workhorse and that's exactly what it is. So I had to give it second place because even though it's not really a handbag for me, it functions beautifully. 
and I could not recommend this bag more. In fact, if something happened to it, I would definitely run out and get another one because that's how much I believe in and love the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. All right, guys, drum roll for my number one bag. It is my Speedy Bandolier in the 25 size in the beautiful, beautiful giant um, plant. Uh, when I saw this bag, oh my goodness, I fell in love with it. So, so many things about this bag to love. First of all, it is beautiful. I love the color of this. Another gorgeous grayish, taupe-ish neutral that goes with absolutely everything. The hardware is beautiful. It's still shiny. I've had this for um, almost two years now. Absolutely gorgeous bag. And you can see how nice and shiny the padlock is. And of course, the thing that makes the bandolier stand out is the strap. So I love, love, love having the strap. In fact, um, I had a stitch come out on my strap. I sent it back to Louis Vuitton. They gave me a new one free of charge. So great customer service. And I just love this bag. It is um, the same capacity as my other uh, speedy. However, because the zippers come down on the side, it is a little bit easier to open. And of course, with the strap, it does dual duty. So you can wear it on your shoulder and you can also use it as a top handle bag. A lot of times I will carry a top handle and then just have the, stra the strap draping down. Um, absolutely gorgeous bag. And as you can see, that pink organizer that I was talking about, I have it inside here just to make it a little bit more functional and easy to find things in the bag. But uh, love, love, love this bag. It is my number one today in uh, 2023. Obviously, taste change, styles change, but for right now, I would have to say that this is my best Louis Vuitton bag. So that is it guys. If you have any comments or questions, do leave them down below. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It is much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Take care.